Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Um, we're set to look at our, our, our top paper headlines this morning. And I'm glad to have Chris Kende Wandu. Uh, uh, might I like to call it the tribalized Nigerians because if you go to the southwest, he's there in his name. You go to the southeast, he's there in his name. And I think he's in a good position. I don't know how he, is, well, how he feels with all that's going on right now. Uh, Chat out Arbitrator, UK Trade. Chris, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning. All right. Chris, getting one, do you? Yeah. Yes. I remember the last few times we, we had conversations with you in Abuja before you, you shifted base to Lagos. Um, there were um, bandit and terrorist attacks. And now in Lagos, we're seeing election-related violence. I don't know why, uh, what, what we're going to, to, to do about all these issues in the country. Um, but we'll take your thoughts uh, on that. I'm sure the papers will also give us an opportunity. Let's quickly look at the Punch newspaper with the following headline. This is on the front page uh, of the Punch uh, newspaper. It says, um, APC wins 15 states, PDP 6 states, NMPP takes Kano. Uh, right up to that, 27 killed. Nationwide in election violence, thuggery. Uh, Gandhi J. Tambo, our candidates lose. Uh, PDP rejects Ogun. Katsina results. Kwankwasia supporters defy carefully jubilate in Kano. INEX suspends Abia. Enugu coalition declares Adamo our governorship poll inconclusive. EFCC grills four NCAA chiefs over alleged two billion naira fraud. Anger has NMPCL uh, hires expatriate to head subsidiary. EU observers blame politicians INEC for vote buying. Sonwolu, Sonwolu raises civil servant salary by 20%. Um, Lagos husband arraigned for wife's death. Musician friend killed BDC operators. Guard arrested. Okay, let's go over to uh, the next paper. The Nation uh, newspaper. APC wins 15 states. BDP 6. NNPP takes Kano. Labour Party leads in Abia. Fubara Otru. Uh, Oborewoi or Oborewori, our governors elect. This is talking about uh, some states, uh, Delta State, Cross River State, and River State. Okay, more from the nation. Polls inconclusive in Adamawa, Kebi, Abia, Enugu. Uh, foreign observers hail INEC. This is uh, contrary to what we saw on the front page of the punch where they said foreign observers uh, blame INEC for vote buying. So, which one will we take? Um, more from the nation. Expect new moon for Ramadan tomorrow, says Sultan. Jam sets new guideline for the uh, direct entry registration. Cash crisis. Uh, banking infrastructure for expansion. Lagos OKs. 20% salary raise for workers. Payment uh, backdated. Uh, protesters INEC. Now, on the front page of the, the Guardian, we have the following uh, stories or headlines. Protests as INEC. Suspends election results in Adamawa, Abia, Enugu. Um, thugs invade Kanu APC sectariat. And uh, of course, uh, dissecting the Supreme Court in Lawan versus Machina. Uh, contributors receive 208 billion naira as unemployment benefits in six months, as some of the stories on the front page of The Guardian. Um, let's uh, go to the business day. Divisive elections give investment starved, investment starved Nigeria new headache. Divisive elections give investment-starved Nigeria new headache. Um, Chris, let's start with business day. Uh, thank you for your time once again. The, the <laughs> issue is not just about the economic uh, problems, but you see that now that we have a president-elect who didn't have a majority of the popular vote. This should be for the first time you know, in a long time, uh, the significant gap between the winner and the loser um, or the top two parties, let's say, compared to the rest, isn't that wide. We have three parties, and the votes have been shared around. So the losers have more votes than the president, way higher votes than the president. So it means that he's inheriting a divided country um, who ha he has there are more supporters of opposition parties than his own supporters. Um, how do you think this you know, will give Nigeria a new headache, you know, in terms of, and what are your thoughts on this anyway, uh, ahead of the, the administration's four years. Well, um, that is why uh, people believe that um, the uh, president-elect ought to have also come out to condemn what is happening in Lagos State because he has been elected the president of Nigeria, not president of 
APC. So um, put into context what you just said, uh, there's need for healing, there's need for expression among all ethnic groups. Part of the problem we had in 2019 was when President Muhammad Buhari also came, was in London and said uh, 97% and 5% uh, when he was talking about lopsidedness in his appointments. And that in itself generated a lot of problems. Yeah, so uh, it is a way known for that um, if you look at the results, as it were, uh, the president led had barely about 8 million votes. The next to him were about 6 million. And even the third person looked about almost 6 million. So combined, if you combine the two uh, other candidates, they uh, were clocking about 30 million. Uh, put together, it's about more than what the so I would expect a more reconciliatory uh, 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 action from the president elect and try to close the gap. Uh, instead of us moving further apart, this should be time for uh, uh, conciliation so that everybody will have a sense of belonging in this country. Part of the problem we're having is that people don't feel wanted. And that is why you are seeing the agitations here and there. I put here. Uh, the ones of the South is led by Ibuhu and other parts. So um, he has his board cut out and we hope that he will rise up to the occasion and um, do the needs for by uniting the parents. But uh, what is happening in Lagos and some other parts oh. at this point of our life? Should they even be talking about this? Oh. Okay. Uh, may God help us. Let's look at the stories. I will take a headline from the front page of the Punch newspaper. Um, uh, EU observers blame politicians, INEC, for vote buying in some parts of the country. I mean, it's a legal state. Um, we saw, you know, food being shared, money was being shared. Uh, and, uh, of course, some people, in some places, when the money ran out, they have to give people beer. Um, and it's widespread, not just in Le Le Lagos state. In other parts of the country, they even printed ATM cards, their own, you know, cards that people could, could use to to cash money out. So while the uh, punch says EU observers uh, blame politicians INEC for vote buying, um, the nation is saying that uh, foreign observers hail INEC. Um, which one should we take, Chris Kende Wandu? Well, um, you, uh, you have to take the punch because if you know the leadership, I've always said it. And uh, what, which is why I've said this time with Anu at this time question, probably before, until after the election. I don't think um, any media organization would take a newspaper like the nation seriously. Uh, I personally wouldn't have been doing the because um, other papers mean that um, the ownership of the paper is not so their yeah, their yeah, editorials is not balanced as it's supposed to be. But I, I watched the EU uh, representatives when they had a press conference yes. and um, what punch reported was the fact they stated that show put by uh, the inability of INEC to do the need to uh, stick into Jews. So we, we know they're going to vote by it because uh, it has become part of a electoral system. But it's like Nigerians, you know Nigerians, they always find a way of circumventing every law. In as much as the electoral art uh, um, set up an artist, EFCC was around, moving around. I said, How many personalities do the EFCC have that to be able to go around to be able to arrest all those that involved with that? But it was widespread and it's not limited to any particular party. So it was very complex parties. And people are taking, the parties are taking advantage of the poverty level of our people. And um, so, in these days, it was, you know, that at the point, getting 1,000 Naira cash was a problem. So if you see somebody give you 5,000 Naira, they'll jump at it, and they are capitalizing on that. But taking um, a look at the front page of most of the newspapers, uh, where it says APC, uh, it means 15 state PDP, 6. As of this morning, that of PDP has risen to 9. Because if you add the results coming from River State, PDP won River State. PDP also won in Taraba State. And the shocking one is that Matawale has lost his election in Zampara State. It has been taken over by PDP, it was won by a PDP candidate. So
So that brings the total to nine for uh, PDP. Uh, don't forget, we are looking at about 28 states where uh, governorship election was held on Saturday. So uh, we're all cruising home. But the, another uh, snatch to that is what is happening in Abia and Enugu states, where the, uh, the INEC had to suspend relation of result because of uh, um, clashes and skirmishes. Um, that is going on in Abia in Kimba and uh, in Enugu State, two local governments that in this area put a stop to the pollution of and I hope that will be resolved as quickly as possible so that the result will be declared. Because the more you postpone that, the attention rises within the states. And if it's not well managed, uh, uh, can split into uh, uh, other kind of uh, things and violence. Suspicion here as well will come and we start setting it. So I hope that I can get it resolved as possible and now the result in those okay. states. Um, Adamawa and uh, I think Gombe, um, the result have been. KB. <laughs> KB, sorry, KB. Adama and KB is inconclusive. Uh, this is not the first time we are uh, used to inconclusiveness. I think it's used to this. And let's see what comes out after that. All right. Um, uh, I, I think one of the, the things to take away from this election is that. Uh, you know, when it comes to the the state elections, yeah, their politics of state elections is local, not national. Uh, what I mean is, you know, even if you have uh, a party winning presidential election, that influence may not translate into local uh, a success. If you have a party um, in, in, being the incumbent at the federal level, it still may not translate into local success. And so maybe it's not all stick for INEC. Uh, when you see the likes of, like you say, Matawale losing elections, you know, in their state, then you might begin to say, well, there's some, some positives, you know, in this election, wouldn't you say? Yes, I agree with you. And uh, I was just making a post on social media yesterday that um, how come that uh, the Labour Party that won uh, about 12 states during the presidential uh, have not been able to win any um any governorship election, so at least do at all, the one is clear. And then somebody I was asking, what was it? Was it, it that the obedience didn't come out to the Labour Party? Was from obedience, we are saying, oh no, it's because it was rigged. I saw what happened in the I said, yes, I saw what happened in the um, But there are other states that we didn't have such, and I expected that they both take a good example a state like the two states, oh. where um, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party won hands down. But when it came to the governorship, incumbent APC uh, governor, uh, APC government, a plateau state, lost PDP, which was in an opposition party. So, um, so you, it, can, it might not be just right that we now say it was because of um, uh, 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 skirmishes and here and there. Um, so, but probably it will also be that some of the people that voted for Labour Party or uh, it will be feel uh, aggrieved by the result and decided not to come out. Uh, but another person said, no, there's a difference between Labour Party and obedience. So obedience are not members of the Labour Party, and they voted for their candidate uh, in the presidential. So you cannot hold them they are responsible for whatever happened to the Labour Party in the last election. But as I agree with you, uh, politics is local. And you expected that the governors are going to come out with, with everything they have to make sure they retain their state and also Make sure that the anointed candidates, if they are not returned, <laughs> get the ticket, and that is what they are doing. Um, uh, let's let's come back to to what's going on the tribal, um, uh, uh, you know, tr tribal, you know, rhetoric um, and the propagation of of hate speech. Um, the political parties, especially presidential candidates. They paraded themselves in Abuja to sign a peace accord. And you have their officials and their proxies coming out to, to, to propagate hate speech. And uh, they've said nothing about it. Like you said, the silence could, could indicate complicity. They need to speak. But um, there's a, a front page commentary in Business Day. The title of this front page commentary is Before the Dog Whistle, Ethnic profiling turn into civil war. Before the dog whistle and ethnic profiling turn into civil war. And um, it's, it's a lot, so I won't go into the details, but 
What, what do you think about such a, a, a commentary and just your thoughts on, on the situation in that regard? You know, Nigerians, uh, we are very, when it comes to history, we have very short memory. And that is the problem with our, uh, our leaders and Nigerians. Most people have forgotten how the 1966 um, civil war uh, started and uh, the outcome of that. It is also how to do with ethnic profiling, and that was how the civil war started. And when people make certain inflammatory um, um, uh, statements that could put the lives of other people at risk, then that in itself, we also have to go and see what happened in Rwanda. We are close to what we wiped out within two months. That is also because of the statement. And that is why I've been expecting um, the president elect to condemn the statement by people close to him. A good example is Bayo uh, Nonoga, who is the director general of his uh, publicity committee, uh, head of the publicity committee and media committee of presidential uh, election, where he came out, a seasoned journalist, the founder of the news, PM News, Tempo. Um, that uh, so many of us grew up in the journalism profession grew up to come to life. And then, because he has become a politician, former director general of Bond, came out to say that any woman who is not ready to stay should leave the state and that this is going to be the last thing people should try to get into. You know, so many inflammatory statements. And I said it time with a number of times. When you continue to point this kind of thing, you see, continue to value people in the process. Don't forget that also other ethnic groups, your ethnic group, and also in other parts of the country, including the southeast. So, and to feed the most, <laughs> most interesting part is that most of these people that are shouting uh, are questions are not from Lagos. Go and look from where by your non Definitely, is not from Lagos State. It's, it could be from one of the states in the southwest. Everybody comes to Lagos and say, "Oh, we are in Lagos." Lagos is a cosmopolitan city, and Nigeria, of all shades of life, Igbos, Yorubas, Aulas, have been living harmoniously. Um, the, guy that, the guy at our gate, where I live, is an outsider that we've been staying with him for five, five, six years. I don't have any problem. We don't have problem with him. So many of us. So it, I, the, the, the problem is that the local, the, the, the average Nigerian don't have any problem with themselves. It's always the politi politicians that are always using that to be able to divide us, to be able to play into their narrow narratives. And that if they don't use ethnicity, they use religion. Those are the two things they use. So, and then some people will just um, build into that and continue to also. But this is not the time for that. And um, Lagos is a cosmopolitan um, city. There's no way anybody can say, oh, nobody owns Lagos. Of course, Yoruba owns Lagos. You can't say that. You can't go to my village in Obo and say uh, your man owns Obo. Obo belongs to your people. Your, Lagos is a, it, it, it belongs to Yoruba. But the fact is that there has been this harmonious relationship because Lagos was once the capital city of Nigeria, just like Abuja. And you have a lot of... So the development of Lagos was not done by one particular ethnic group. But every Nigerian that finds that call Lagos a home, and that is what it should be. I don't think this should kind of and that is why I call on the uh, governor of Lagos State, who I uh, expect to also come out to be able to address this issue, and other leaders from the state to assure everybody that as far as you are in Lagos, Lagos is home for you, rather than we continue this uh, narrative that will lead us to nowhere. If we continue on this path, then we are dividing ourselves more. Hmm. There's a song that uh, uh, has been going around, I think it's by uh, I don't know if it's Olu Gungo or some some guy. It's uh, it's, it's filled with a lot of hate. He, you know, um, warning this a guy. I'm told he's the one who he sang a song you know, during the time of Abacha, and uh, that that song got him either imprisoned or something. But he had to run away uh, uh, for a while, and um, it's all over the internet. I came across it yesterday, uh, where he's saying that you know all this Omoibo thing. Uh, they shouldn't be appointed or given appointment again, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And you have all of these things going around. And it's really sad to see because you know what happened in Rwanda. But we'll leave it at that. Uh, before we go, let's take your thoughts on uh, a story on the front page of the Nation newspaper. Uh, cash crisis, banking infrastructure for expansion. And since the banks, you know, they've been overwhelmed uh, with the reliance of both Nigerians on their internet infrastructure, 
you know, and uh, it's not really been able to stand the test of time. And the paper is saying they want to expand. Um, please give us your thoughts on this. Yes, I, I would blame the central bank for that because the, the rush, with, the madness with and rush, the way they want to compel every Nigerian to go into electronic banking, um, it doesn't work that way. It's a, it's a gradual thing. All the economies of the world that, that have gone electronically, uh, you're still having them use cash in as much as not, maybe not in volume of volume. But you, you, they, they still have elements of cash. So, uh, but a situation where the central bank wants everybody to go uh, cashless, electronic, without expanding the necessary infrastructure that is on ground within the bank, that is why you're having so many glitches. That is why you make transfer. It takes two days for it to land. That is why he hits account. That is why you have a lot of decline. That's why you have to log on into the uh, the bank uh, portals. We can't make it. And we should be very careful because if you look at what is going on across the globe, so many banks are going on. You've seen the Silicon Valley Bank, what is happening in Silicon, uh, to the Silicon Valley Bank that uh, uh, the United States and United Kingdom are putting pumping billions and are being taken over into those banks and they have been taken even Swiss Bank, the second largest bank in Swiss, Switzerland, was almost going under yesterday or day before yesterday before it was quickly brought over by UBS. So banks are having serious shocks across the globe. So if we are not careful the way we handle uh, our situations, we might just see another set of uh, banks going down and Nigerians losing their funds. That is why some of us have said that central bank governor and central bank should be very careful in the policies it brings us so that it does not put the bank in danger and they will put the life of Nigerians at risk. All right, all right. Uh, Chris, uh, we want to thank you so much for your time. Uh, most of the papers have uh, about the same story, coverage of the governorship election announcement, results announcements, and so we'll leave it at that. Um, but any final word from you, uh, just to summarize some of what you've said today into a nutshell before we say goodbye to you. But I said what? I didn't hear you. Right. Yeah, before you go, just a final word from you. Yes, I, 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 I want to give color um, negotiations to see them as themselves as well. As I said, uh, as you know, my mother is, uh, I mean, this is Maya. My mother is Yoruba, my father is, and so I'm in mean, the size of the divide. Um, so I will follow on Nigerians and negotiations as well. So I can see themselves as well. They should not allow politicians to divide them and make sure that they continue to live in harmony among themselves, not allow anybody to use them against themselves. Because at the end of it all, we are going to be the losers, not the politicians. All their families are already in the United Kingdom and United States. They move them away. Most of their families are in Canada. So if there's any problem, it's not going to affect them. It is our own children that are here with the born Nigeria are not about to send our children outside that will survive the law. So um, I once again appeal to everybody within Nigeria and also Lagos to give this a chance. All right, uh, Chris Kende Mwandu, thank you very much for your time. And uh, of course, uh, we look forward to having you again soon. And I hope that by the next time we come here, uh, freed nerves would have been calmed and you know people would have settled down to look at how to best move forward. Thank you very much for your time. Chris Kende Mwandu is a chartered, a UK trained chartered arbitrator, and he's been our guest on Off the Press. We'll take a break. And when we come back, we uh, continue our review of the governorship elections uh, right here on The Breakfast. Please stay with us.